uh, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. It's uh, been a while, but I'm Nithya and I'm going to be reviewing all the books I've read in 2020 so far as of November 30th, 28th, whatever the day is. Um, so yeah, I started off the year by reading a bunch of Avatar The Last Airbender comics, um, starting with The Promise. Uh, the Promise is where Zuko is indecisive about every decision he makes as a Fire Lord and is scared that he would turn into his father and all that. He almost starts a war because he's indecisive, but then like, you know, everything happens. Uh, 4.5 stars. Then we have The Search, which is the best Avatar The Last Airbender graphic novel in my opinion. Um, there's Zuko and Azula, who is still kind of in that mental breakdown after it happened at the end of the series. And they look for their mom. So five stars. Uh, the Rift, tough. Toph is Toph, she deals with daddy issues and there's also like a big culture thing that happens in like the, av the previous Avatar and like the spirit world. It's a cool lead up to Korra, it's cool. 4.5 stars. Silk in Shadows, people are trying to overthrow Zuko. But of course, the Kyoshi warriors are there, everyone else is there, Mei is there, it's awesome. 5 stars. So yeah, those are the Avatar comics. So moving on to some other books I've read. How to Speak Dragonese, written by Cressida Cromwell. I listened to the audiobook, narrated by David Tennant. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Toothless gets captured by Romans and then cool shenanigans. Five out of five stars. I had a lot of fun with it. Harry Potter book four, because why not? Um, Boo JK Rowling, worst Harry Potter book even though I love them all. Um, nostalgia points, because I don't know how to rate the series, because Empress of All Seasons by Miko Jean. Based on Japanese mythology, there is like a tournament that happens, which is pretty cool. Um, cool world building, great concept. Um, but also I was extremely bored. Um, great commentary though. World building was great. Characters were absolutely boring. Three stars. I feel like these are more than 30 seconds long, but at this point, I don't care. The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis. Uh, something about a horse, something about a boy. I think the horse can talk and they both go to Narnia, but that's all I remember. Probably my least favorite uh, Narnia book. Also had some very racist things in it. Three stars. Reflection, A Twisted Tale by Elizabeth Lim basically follows the story of Mulan, except after the whole Taishin Pass thing happens in the Disney movie, Shang actually dies and Mulan goes to the underworld to save him. Pretty cool. Um, I gave it a three stars because I like the original Mulan better. I don't think the whole underworld journey added to the story. So, okay, whatever. Uh, it's pretty cool. It was entertaining. As Old as Time, a t another twisted tale by Liz Friswell. Um, basically follows the story of Beauty and the Beast, except Belle's mother was the person who cursed the beast. Honestly, I think this is a lot better than the Disney's Beauty and the Beast, in my opinion. It, it lessens the whole Stockholm Syndrome thing um, and other criticisms that Beauty and the Beast has, uh, which is cool. I really like that. And it was just an overall more compelling story. So five out of five stars. Another twisted tale, Conceal Don't Feel by Jen Calonita. I think that's how you say her name. I could be wrong. Uh, basically follows the story of Elsa and Anna, except they were separated after the whole accident happened where Anna got her like white streak and whatnot, and they don't remember each other. But other than that, the entire story is basically frozen, except Elsa's not trying to run from Anna, Elsa's trying to find Anna. It's cool. I gave it a four stars. It was fun. Enjoyed it. The Demon King. I let my friend borrow the first book, so I don't have it, but I gave it nostalgia points because it was a reread. And it's extremely underrated though, so go read it. Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Uh, this is basically a crossover between Avatar The Last Airbender and Nigerian Mythos, but also there's more to it than that. It's really cool. Characters are great, and boy, was I at the edge of my seat the entire way through. It was so good. Um, really love the characters. Amari is my favorite character, by the way. Five out of five stars. Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. Uh, ah, chaos. 
Things happen. More things happen. I don't know what's happening. Amari, what are you doing? Amari stole my favorite character. Five out of five stars. The legend of Mulan, the warrior of ancient China, or a heroine of ancient China. It's pretty cool. It's basically uh, the traditional Mulan. It has cool illustrations. It's a lot of fun. And also, my favorite thing, there was an entire scene where like Mulan gathers a bunch of goats and scares away an army with a bunch of goats and lanterns. And it is the coolest thing ever and I love it. Um, yes. I'll Be The One by Lila Lee follows the story of Sky, who is a fat Korean American who wants to be a K-pop star. Uh, and deals basically joins a competition to have that chance to get into like the K-pop industry and has and faces a lot of fat phobia from the whole everything. Um, has really cool body positivity messages, LGBT rep, which is great. Um, and overall, it's a great book. Only complaint is the writing style is a bit weird, where everything's a little bit confusing. Um, other than that, maybe it might be because I read the art for it. Um, other than that, four out of five stars. Solid book. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ding. Uh, where do I even begin with this book? Um, Mia and Pearl move into Shaker Heights, Ohio, which basically is a community that puts out an appearance of perfection, but really they're... There's little fires everywhere, basically. I cannot describe this book in 30 seconds or less. If you want a book review on it, please let me know. I would love to do one. But yeah, uh, five out of five stars, phenomenal novel. Uh, Mia Warren is ace, fight me. Beasts of the Frozen Sun by Jill Criswell. <sighs> Let's see, nothing ever good happens to the characters. Nothing ever good happens. Forest of Arrows by B.F. Sharp. They're in a world where magic is basically illegal, um, but these group of friends smuggle a little bit of magic powder to play this game with arrows, and then get lost in a forest, which is magical, and weird things happen. And then they figure out that bad things are coming back from the past. It's a big thing. There is so many characters, and I don't remember all of them. They, there's nothing distinct about them, but it's a fun read, I guess. Uh, three out of five stars. A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry um, basically follows the story of a Black family in Southside Chicago who have different dreams and aspirations in life and just kind of follows them uh, throughout what th their decisions and whatnot. Uh, pretty cool. The character banter in this book is amazing. I love it. Um, it's written really well. Um, and yeah, it's cool. Uh, four out of five stars. 1984 by George Orwell. Uh, the first dystopia of dystopias, I think. Yeah, not, the, not much happens in the plot. The characters are pretty bland. But the world building, the world building, the world building is amazing. It's, it's like the world building just... And the imagery and figurative language. It's really well written and the world building. But great book to analyze for English class, I guess. Uh, other than that, no strong feelings. 3.5 out of five stars. Bells by Danielle Clayton, 1984, but like YA dystopia, but not really, that makes no sense. But basically, this is a world where the, all the humans are gray, they're, they have like straw-like hair, everyone just kind of looks really ugly, except for the bells who have the power to change how people look, and they, and they look pretty and like humans. Um, yeah, lots of diversity in this book, which is great because I'm always here for diversity. Um, and it's overall a great plot and a great concept and a really good set setup for the next book. And I really enjoyed it. Four out of five stars. The Everlasting Rose, a meh sequel to The Bells. I hated all the side characters. The plot was like really slow at the beginning and extremely rushed at the end. I don't know how it was all, it was all resolved really kind of vaguely. It, two, three out of five stars. The Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Superheroes fight superheroes, but only sort of. Uh, the Renegades hate the anarchists. There's only like five or six anarchists. So why are they such a big threat? But okay, I regress, whatever. Um, the main characters are pretty cool, Noah, and then the other guy who I don't remember the name of, which I should, it starts with an A, but he has cool drawing powers where he can draw and then the thing he draws comes to life. It's pretty cool and super overpowered and it's amazing. Basically, if you don't think too much about the plot and how things make sense, you'll really like this book. It's pretty cool. Four out of five stars. 
those were all the books I've read in 2020 so far. Uh, I do plan to read more books because I have book club and then school reading and whatnot. So uh, yeah, I'll probably read those and maybe do mini reviews for those, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm not sure if this was done before. It probably was. I know it was done for TV shows. I don't know about books, but alas, whatever. Um, just thought it was fun. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.